Hey guys, how's it going? Preparing here. So today we're gonna do a video about Greece. Why are we gonna do that? Well, today is basically my last day in Greece. Uh, we're going to be relocating to Canada, mostly, uh, for the uh, foreseeable future. And uh, I wanna talk to you guys about my stay here. Some of you guys may not realize, but I've been in Greece for a while. So why, why am I in Greece? Well, I came to Greece to be with my girl, Rania, and I came uh, in February of last year. So it's been, you know, almost a year and a half uh, of stay in Greece. And I've learned basically how things are moving. And I wanna show you guys some of my interactions, some of my understanding, what I think of, and just how stuff is doing here. Before I go into that, I want to um, tell you tell you guys what's going on with the move. So uh, this is, again, my, my last night in Greece. Um, I'm going to be going to Canada, we're going to fly in tomorrow, and uh, some things have to change a little bit. Uh, my stream schedule, which has been what it is for the last year and a half, has been what it is because you know, I kind of accommodated my schedule to Greece, and I think I'm going to kind of keep it that way. Right now, I've been streaming from 12.30 a.m. Uh, EST, 6.30 a.m. CET, until 9 a.m. EST to uh, 3 p.m. CET, and uh, the plan is to shift this one and a half hours earlier. So I'll be starting my stream uh, from now on at 11 p.m. EST and I'll be streaming for eight and a half hours I have. And uh, because of the move and because right after we uh, go to Canada, uh, we're going to uh, attend the uh, ESL event. I'm going to be casting the Legendary Series Finals of ESL. I'm going to LA and we'll be there for about a week. Uh, so it's, it's a huge bundle of things that's going on all at the same time. So I won't be able to stream for about a week. There's gonna be no stream from June 1st to June 8th going to be resuming on June 9th when I'll be back and I'll be streaming from Canada. Uh, I don't, can't promise the yellow wall or anything like that because I don't know what the setup will be like. We'll have to sort it out in the short period of time that we have while we're there. Um, but we'll figure something out. I'll stream. I might even stream uh, from the ESL studios, but if I do that, it won't be scheduled. There basically won't be anything. So don't, don't get your hopes too high uh, on that end. As far as YouTube videos, you guys know I do upload YouTube videos fairly consistently. Um, it's at uh, 3 p.m. EST is when I try to throw them up. And uh, I will try to uh, upload videos at that same time. Um, but that may have to change based on how the schedule works, based on the sleeping hours. I haven't quite figured all that out yet. And after that, let's talk about Greece. So this is Greece on the map. It's, uh, it's a lot of islands, a lot of water. Um, it's uh, the Mediterranean, uh, or the Aegean, as uh, the Greeks call it, their, their side of things. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of nice things to see, there's some pretty cool people. There's, there's 10 million people, in fact, in Greece. 10 million is not really a big number when you compare it to like the States or something like that, but when it's one third of Canada, that's quite, quite a lot of people. And half of them happen to be in Athens, where uh, I have been staying for the last year and a half ish. And when I got to Athens, it was a pretty, uh, pretty interesting uh, experience. Um, when I was flying down, I thought, you know, we weren't actually over a city. I was, uh, I was flying in at like uh, some, some hours in the afternoon, and it literally looked like we were descending upon just a rocky hill. Yes, uh, Athens from the air just looks like a big stone. Uh, it's because all the buildings are like the the, the white stony color and there's so many of them and they're all flat. There's no like skyscrapers or anything. So it literally looks like that and it's, it's pretty crazy. Sometimes it looks like a nicer hill than other times when you know, the sun is out, all that kind of stuff. And yes, there is a lot of sun and sometimes when there's a lot of sun, you get a little bit lazy like the snooze roni. Um, there's also a lot of ports, a lot of places by the sea. It's very touristic. Uh, Greece has a huge tourism industry because, yeah, it's, it's very pretty and it's very scenic and all that kind of shit. And, uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can really enjoy yourselves uh, on a trip here if you want. Um, there's also a lot of ancient stuff. Um, the ancient stuff is basically everywhere, and I mean everywhere, everywhere. Uh, you know, some of the stuff that you guys probably already know about if you're somewhat of a worldly person. You know, the Acropolis is, um, is in Athens, along with the Parthenon in, uh, in, in the top parts of it. And there's also just 
ancient stuff like everywhere for instance the second biggest city Saloniki has uh, you know a lot of really ancient structures like the walls and stuff it's it's crazy it's like a guard tower of the walls that's still up there uh, and um, it's basically you know the, the, the Greeks have a very very long withstanding society and they, they basically built their city on top of the old city so because of that there's like ancient stuff everywhere there's literally like you know extreme overexposure for people who live here like you know there's like a 5,000 year old you know piece of some kind of temple and you know it's just like on the street some dudes just sitting on it and like eating there or something you know it's just just garbage just whatever you know they have the really nice ancient stuff as I mentioned like the Acropolis the Parthenon a few other notable things but there's just like ancient stuff everywhere and people don't give a crap so you know uh, my girl told me when she went to visit like other museums and stuff of other countries it's like a complete joke because you know a lot of other countries really represent what they have you know 500 year old you know rocks and stuff and it's like you know they basically pave the streets with those here so yeah they they're extremely overexposed to this stuff and uh yeah cities on top of cities and this this has a little bit of a downside because of that all the roads are like really narrow uh and you know with half the population being half the population of greece being in athens there's a shitload of people here and with a shitload of people in very small spaces it's a pain in the ass to get around uh, and actually everyone tries to like Almost everyone has like a car or a motorcycle. There's a lot of motorcycles here, mostly in the summer times, of course. But the streets are ridiculous. Like, uh, I got a bike here. I tried a bike here. It's impossible. Like, it's it's ridiculously dangerous. Drivers here are really good. Like, if you think if you think you can drive in in like the states or something, and you you go to Greece and you gotta just drive there, no chance, no chance. People here are fucking animals on on the roads, dude. You have you have no idea. You've never seen like driving like this. Everyone is a pro. And uh, there's there's a lot of insane pros out there. Um, so yeah, it's it's ridiculous. The streets are extremely tight. The cars are extremely small, and it's still tight for them. Um, and the roads, because they're built on top of like the old shit, they're very sloped. They're very narrow. They're very crooked and stuff. So yeah, it's very pretty when you look at it. But when you actually try to use here, uh, use this stuff, when you know people who actually live here, they're not too happy with the road and driving situation overall. Uh, the more remote areas of Greece, outside the, the two big cities, outside of Athens, outside of Thessaloniki, there's also some very nice stuff. Uh, most of the areas are rocky and stuff, but they still grow things uh, because, you know, it is a very hot climate. And uh, in some areas, it actually has very cold climates, like there's actually snow in Greece, which is pretty crazy. Uh, as, uh, you know, it, it's mostly because of the high elevations of some areas. So uh, some parts of Greece are much higher than others. And the way that works is, well, if you, like the air works off a of density. So the lower you are, the denser the air, and the denser the air, the hotter the air. So at high elevations, there's not much air. And because of that, the air particles don't bump into each other and it's cold. I'm pretty sure it works that way. It's been a while. But yeah, high up, cold. So Greece has high parts, cold there, low parts, hot there. So it's uh, it's pretty varied. You can uh, you can find find your nice temperature if you want, I suppose. Uh, people overall here, uh, they're pretty nice. They're very outgoing. It's very easy to like you know ask for advice, ask for directions. You know the the sociability is is one that I haven't seen uh, in another country quite this this degree. People are just uh, you know very easy to talk to one another, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty amazing coming from like Canada because in Canada, uh, one thing is you know everyone's nice and shit, but you know they. People just keep to themselves, like really, really keep to themselves. So that's that's very different here. And uh, people here, obviously, because of the uh, geography, uh, they have a very strong connection to the sea. A lot of people like fishing and stuff, and there's a lot, a lot of like wildlife and stuff. Like like there's turtles everywhere. I like I don't go outside much. You know, for me, staying in Greece is basically stay, the same as staying anywhere because I just sit inside and stay at the computer every hour of every day, except for like, you know, when I have to do something and go outside, which is very rare. Um, but when I do, and when I have, I've actually come across like several turtles, even though I don't go outside at all. You know, so there's, there's quite a bit of uh, fun little animals here and there, and it's, it's, it's kind, of, kind of fun to run into them every now and then. Uh, and of course, 
because it's by the sea, because people interact with the sea, because it's that kind of culture. They eat a lot of things from the sea. So a lot of people like to eat seafood and the food here is pretty amazing. Um, the food in, in Greece and from what I've seen so far generally in Europe compared to like the Americas is that um, in, in Europe and let's say specifically in Greece, the variety is fairly low compared to what you might be used to in like America. But the, the quality is uh, noticeably higher in most cases. And this is even true for like the supermarket. Like, you know, you go to the supermarket, you want to get like orange juice. They don't have much orange juice and it's, you know, some of the stuff is still really bad, but uh, some of the stuff is like really good. And it seems to be that way for just, you know, all the little things that you, uh, you may need. And uh, out of the stuff that I eat, you know, there's, there's a lot of veggies here as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of vegetables involved in uh, the recipes and stuff that they make. And you know, again, it's easy to grow because it's a nice hot climate and there's basically a lot of stuff. Um, out of the things that I like to eat, like what, while I've been here, this is like the best of the best, okay? So uh, you, got, you got the strawberry sorbet. Like this, this is the, Greece has the best vegan ice cream I've ever had. And, and it's not just like one place. It's like almost anywhere you go. So there's sorbets here. Uh, they, they make ice cream with, with zero, um, with zero like milk stuff. So I can have it, which is awesome, which is a pretty rare thing in most places. But a lot of places have, um, you know, uh, basically vegan ice cream, vegan sorbets. And I have sampled a lot of it, as you guys can tell. And uh, I've been very, very happy with it. Um, uh, strawberry is, is fraules. So you get fraules sorbet. Yeah, it's it's very very good stuff, and also the corn here is pretty nice. This is something that they used to have in like Romania when I was a little kid, and I guess maybe it stuck with me from that time. But uh, it's it's fun, you know, fun to get the the kalaboki when uh, when you go out, especially by the sea. It's, yeah, you just chow down on that shit, and it's super cheap, so whatever, right? Another pretty unique thing uh, I thought I'd throw on my list of interesting foods here is uh, the the salepi. Uh, uh, salepi is, is made from like a flour. And uh, the substance is kind of like glue-ish. Uh, it's like slimy, but not like slimy slime. It kind of holds together a little bit, but still kind of like a liquid. And uh, they put like cinnamon and shit on it. And basically it's kind of like a pea or something. Uh, but because it's like uh, gooey and stuff, it holds the temperature very well. So uh, there's a lot of like the Slepi stands, um, uh, downtown Athens, for instance. And you get like a cup and the cup, the stuff, the Slepi inside the cup stays warm like forever. Uh, even even when it's like snowing, for instance. So yeah, it's 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 really cool. It tastes really nice. It's like very flavorful and sweet and flowery and shit. Yeah. Uh, out, outside of that stuff, that's you know that's, that's mostly it. Uh, my time here, I've I've learned a few things. Um, I've tried to learn the language a little bit, even though I don't have to use it at all again because I just stay inside all day. Um, it's it's important to learn a few things because you do need to communicate on a very basic level. And I can throw you guys some some crip tips here on what you should be learning uh, when you go to a new country. It's important to know uh, numbers. Uh, and you know, if you want to min max, you don't actually have to uh, learn numbers over like 10. Uh, because after that, you can just say the number. So if it's like 15, you can say one five, you know, so you, you got you got to know, um, you got to know zero through 10, I'd say, and zero through 10. And uh, in Greek is, is maybe a little bit tricky in some cases because it is a very different language uh, compared to what some people might be used to. But uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool and it's not that much of an effort. Also with food, it's important to know uh, some of the names for some of the stuff you like because, well, that's the stuff you want to be eating. That's the stuff you want to get when you're out. So it's, it's, it's good to know. You just pick food you like and learn what it's called and then you just say that when you want to eat that. Yes, very basic stuff, but uh, it's important. It's uh, it's a world, you know, diving into a whole new country, a whole new environment, a whole new language all at once, you know, is is a fun experience, and I do recommend it. If if it if it fits your life at some point in time, uh, go for it. It's a good experience, and uh, for me, it's been quite a great one. So that's gonna be it, guys. Goodbye to Greece for now. I'm sure I'll visit uh, several times uh, coming forward, but. Yeah, for now, this is it. I've had fun in my stay, and I hope you guys uh, maybe learned a few things uh, from my little overview here. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.